Have you ever been hurt because a loved one didn't acknowledge a special day, such as your birthday or Mother's Day? In this reading, we'll look at why an adult daughter chose to ignore Mother's Day and whether things will improve in this mother-daughter relationship. Hi everybody, I'm Sue Allen Clayton. Welcome to my channel where we're learning how to read tarot one card at a time. In today's video, we'll be using a three-card spread to answer the question, why didn't my client's daughter wish her a happy Mother's Day? I will be using the Radiant Rider Waite Tarot, and there is a link below. This reading was at the request of a friend who had a pretty crappy Mother's Day. I'm going to call my friend Joan and her daughter Sandy. Here's the situation. Joan and her husband have one child, a daughter named Sandy, who is currently in her early 30s. For many years, Sandy was a perpetual student and has a great deal of education and the student loans to go along with it. Unfortunately, Sandy prefers learning to working and after amassing considerable debt, including loans due to her parents, Sandy ended up moving back with Joan and her husband. This happened after Sandy lost her job during COVID because she refused to wear a mask at work. Joan and her husband are hard workers and are currently only a few years away from retirement. They own their own home and live very modestly. Joan's car, for example, is more than 15 years old. Sandy is very clear that she does not want to spend her life as a worker bee and is critical of her parents' choices. During the last few years, Sandy has worked a few hours a week from home, but never made enough to cover any of her expenses, let alone make any headway on repaying her debt. Joan and her husband have provided Sandy with free room and board, in addition to helping her pay loans and credit cards. At this point, Joan is very frustrated. Sandy does not help around the house and is also very messy. She also requests expensive groceries such as organic foods that often go to waste because she doesn't get around to cooking for herself. Even though Sandy is in her 30s, she still acts like a kid and expects her parents to make a big deal of her birthday and Christmas. Sandy always provides them with an Amazon wish list of potential gifts and also expects a cake and special meals. But she doesn't ever reciprocate and acknowledge her parents. And that brings us to Mother's Day. So this past Sunday, Mother's Day came and went without Sandy wishing her mother a happy Mother's Day. Joan was upset, but she was also not sure that Sandy even knew it was Mother's Day, something I can relate to because my kids always seem shocked every year when Mother's Day and Father's Day roll around. Sandy also attends church and, two days after Mother's Day, told Joan about the lovely service she'd attended that paid tribute to all of the mothers. So she clearly knew that it was Mother's Day and made the decision not to express similar wishes for her own mother. So that's where we start the reading. The goal is to determine why Sandy didn't wish Joan a happy Mother's Day. To answer this question, I am using a past, present, future three-card spread. Card number one represents past events or influences that may have led to Sandy not wishing Joan a happy Mother's Day. Card number two sheds light on the current situation. What are the circumstances that explain why Sandy didn't wish Joan a happy Mother's Day? Card number three offers insights into potential outcomes or future developments regarding the situation. Given what we know of Sandy's relationship with her mother, what does the future look like? So let's look at the reading in more detail. Card number one represents past events or influences that may have led Sandy to not wish her mother Happy Mother's Day. And I drew the Eight of Swords reversed. In an upright position on the Eight of Swords, we see a young girl whose eyes are blindfolded and her body is bound. She is standing in water and surrounded by swords. In tarot, swords are connected to the element of air and represent intellect and communication. This is a card about feeling trapped and powerless, despite the person being very intelligent and a good communicator. So as an upright card, Sandy might feel like her mom is keeping her from breaking free intellectually and becoming the person she knows she could be. Sandy believes that her mom was holding her back. Another interpretation of the upright Eight of Swords is that it represents communication issues, such as misunderstandings or conflicts, that create barriers. 
So this doesn't mean that Joan is actually holding Sandy back. It means that Sandy thinks that she's being held back. And it looks like a pretty miserable place to be. The interesting thing about the upright Eight of Swords is that the restrictions are entirely self-imposed. If you look closely, you can see that the blindfold is on very loosely, as all the ties are around her body. It would not take much to break free. Also, although the swords look like they are forming a prison, they are really not. There is a large area at the front of the swords that Sandy could easily walk through if she wanted to. It's interesting that Sandy lost her job during COVID because she refused to wear a mask. On the image, we see a woman who is trapped by fabric over her eyes and arms. In Sandy's case, she felt like she was trapped by a situation where she was forced to have fabric over her nose and mouth. At this point, I have to say that I didn't enjoy wearing a mask during COVID, and I don't think anybody else did either. But like the ties on her body and the swords around her, this was not as big a deal as she made it out to be. Sandy saw herself as a victim instead of accepting the need to be a mature adult and make personal sacrifices for the greater good. So now let's look at what the Eight of Swords means in a reverse position and what past events or influences may have led Sandy not to wish her mother Happy Mother's Day. The Eight of Swords reversed is about Sandy breaking free from restrictions and barriers that held her back. In the not-too-distant past, I'm guessing just before COVID and Sandy returned home to live with their parents, Sandy was feeling free. She felt happy and like she had transcended some of the constraints that held her back. This was a time when she was living independently and working. She had overcome a lot of the issues she faced earlier in her life and felt like she was becoming the person she was meant to be. The reversed Eight of Swords is also about staying strong in difficult situations, and Sandy feels she's doing this. She doesn't feel like she is being difficult. She feels like she is sticking to her convictions, that she doesn't want to spend her life in a 9-to-5 job, and is trying to create the life she wants, even within the constraints of her parents' house. I explained this to Joan, and she confirmed that Sandy currently feels like she is being held back by her mother, as she truly enjoyed living alone, and is not happy living with her parents. However, from Joan's viewpoint, she is not holding Sandy back, would love to have Sandy move out, and she views all of Sandy's complaints as being self-imposed. Sandy is trapped financially due to her debts, yet she is not willing to work more than a few hours a week to help repay them. Sandy resents losing her independence and blames the restrictive COVID regulations instead of accepting that she lost her job because she refused to wear a mask. Sandy openly criticizes her parents for working too hard, yet she has no problem having them support her. In summary, at some point prior to Mother's Day, there was a dynamic where Sandy felt like she was doing really well. She felt like she had broken free of the restrictions of her younger life and was enjoying her independence. Then she moved back with her parents and blames her mother for her loss of independence and the restrictions in her life. Card number two sheds light on the current situation. It answers the question, what is happening right now that keeps Sandy from wishing Joan a happy Mother's Day? And I drew the Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is a card with a rich, wealthy lady who pretty much has anything she could want, right down to a pet falcon. We see her standing in a beautiful garden that is full of grape vines. Her dress is beautiful. We can see her castle in the top right corner of the card, which represents stability. She is a wealthy, independent woman, and this card is all about abundance, prosperity, and enjoying life. She can spend her days as she sees fit and doesn't have to worry about money or anything else. I see two interpretations to this card. My first thought was that Sandy currently has all of her needs met, and it's not even on her radar that it could be another way. Her needs are all provided for, her food, her clothing, her hobbies, as Joan is paying for all of these, including the vet bills for Sandy's pet. Sandy doesn't appreciate everything Joan provides or who is paying the bills. She feels like she deserves it. I shared my interpretation with Joan and she agrees that this is true. To paraphrase Joan, Sandy is self-centered and views her current parent-subsidized lifestyle as something that is due to her. However, I wasn't convinced that this was the full story 
and came up with another interpretation that I think explains the situation more fully. And that is that Sandy sees Joan as having it all, and she is jealous. Sandy believes that Joan is living this charmed life with lots of money and that all her needs are being met without any effort. She doesn't see Joan as making choices, such as working at a job that she doesn't even like, or that Joan has earned what she has and lives fairly modestly, especially now that she and her husband are supporting a third adult in their home. Instead, Sandy sees Joan as having it all and living the good life. So she doesn't feel that wishing her mother a happy Mother's Day is necessary because Joan already has everything that she could possibly want or need. I shared this with Joan and she confirmed my interpretation that Sandy is jealous of her. The irony is that Joan has endured some significant financial sacrifices to pay for Sandy's education and hobbies so that Sandy could have everything she wanted. This started with expensive summer camps and private schooling when Sandy was a young child. It included private lessons and trips to Europe when Sandy was in high school. And the financial outlay continued by paying travel and tuition so that Sandy could attend an out-of-state university that was more than 1,400 miles away. Despite many promises that Sandy would pay Joan back for expenditures, Sandy has not repaid so much as a dime. So the current situation is that Sandy sees her mom as having it all and enjoys a luxurious lifestyle that includes everything she wants and needs. For her part, Joan sees this card as representing Sandy, who has lived a luxurious life that has bankrolled by her parents, with Sandy not recognizing the financial stress that it has placed on Joan and her husband. Card number three is the future outlook. This card offers insights into potential outcomes or future developments regarding the situation. I drew the Knight of Cups reversed. In the upright position, the Knight of Cups is basically the knight in shining armor. Cups are all about love. The Knight of Cups is a total romantic and sees life through the lens of a Hallmark movie. He's an idealist and romantic and doesn't necessarily look at things realistically. He's a dreamer and he openly expresses his feelings in a way that makes you want to love him. Unfortunately, the Knight of Cups has a completely different meaning when it's reversed, and this is what we'll likely see in the future with Sandy and Joan. The first thing I notice is that the contents of that gold cup of love will fall out when the card is reversed. There is no love left in it. The reverse Knight of Cups can become very moody and unpredictable, which creates a very tumultuous and tense atmosphere. This can be very confusing because we get glimpses of the romantic knight in shining armor, so it's easy to question whether we're really seeing the nasty side of the knight. But we are, and the love is no longer there. In the future, the relationship loses its connection, and things become very tense. The second outcome has to do with dishonesty. The reverse knight of cups can be manipulative and downright deceptive. They have no issue hiding the truth, and they become difficult to trust. I see this as an ongoing issue with Sandy. Because of her anger toward Joan, she has no issue hiding the truth about what's going on in her life. Joan has confirmed that she has no idea what Sandy does with her time or how she spends the little money she earns. In summary, I don't see the future of Joan's relationship with her daughter getting better and actually, sadly, only see it getting worse. I see Sandy becoming moody and hiding things to the point that she is difficult to trust. I shared this with Joan and she agreed with both interpretations. Joan describes her daughter as dreamy as she has plans that include extensive travel and raising alpacas, which are not realistic given her crippling debt and desire to only work a few hours a week. Joan also feels like Sandy is very secretive and she doesn't trust her. Joan agrees with my assessment that things are not going to get better in the future. So let's summarize. Why didn't Sandy wish Joan a happy Mother's Day? First of all, Sandy saw herself doing well in the past and felt like she'd broken away from her limitations and was becoming the person she wanted to be. However, rather than taking responsibility for her choices, Sandy blames Joan for her current living situation. Sandy doesn't see moving into her parents' home as something she caused or should be grateful for due to her financial situation, which was dire after she amassed a lot of debt and quit her job. Instead, Sandy blames Joan for her circumstances 
and taking away the progress she made in living a fulfilling, independent life. Sandy blames Joan for her lack of freedom and is extremely angry at her mother. Secondly, Sandy takes her current living situation for granted, and it never dawned on her that she should express her things. She feels like Joan is living a charmed life and doesn't need something as simple as Mother's Day wishes. Sadly, I don't see things getting better for Joan in the future and see her relationship with Sandy getting even more tense. I see Sandy becoming increasingly moody, manipulative, and deceptive. I wanted to make a few comments on this reading and about Joan's observations about her daughter. The purpose of this reading was to figure out why Sandy didn't wish Joan a happy Mother's Day, and I feel like the reading accomplished this. What is interesting is how the information impacted Joan, since she was the one who requested the reading. None of the reading was a surprise. At some level, Joan knew that Sandy resented her and was also jealous. She also knew that Sandy was not taking responsibility for her situation and that, without some serious changes, Sandy was probably going to be living with her for a very long time. Much as she'd like to, Joan is not willing to insist that Sandy move out for two reasons. She knows Sandy's current financial situation and, without Sandy be willing to get a full-time job, she is worried that Sandy will end up homeless. The other reason is that Sandy owes Joan and her husband a significant amount of money, which Joan needs for her retirement, and she is hoping that Sandy will have an epiphany and put her meager earnings into repaying her parents. Even though none of this information was a surprise, I do feel like the reading was helpful. It definitely confirmed Joan's suspicions, and clarity is always a good thing. It also gave Joan an opportunity to share her situation with a neutral third party and put all of the information together in a 30-minute time block without a lot of emotion. It gave Joan a really good synopsis of how they got to this situation and confirmed that, without some major changes, nothing is going to change. I feel like this reading was needed in order for Joan to start taking control of the situation with her daughter. I don't feel like anything will change over the next few months, but Joan has taken the first step by opening up about her current circumstances and admitting that things are likely going to get worse. Over the course of the reading, I saw Joan change from being deeply hurt about not getting her Mother's Day wishes to gaining clarity about Sandy's feelings towards her, followed by taking a matter-of-fact look at how unhappy she has been supporting a daughter who is not taking responsibility for her actions. I do feel that this was a significant shift for Joan, and I wish her well. I hope that this video gave you some ideas that you can apply to your tarot practice. Leave some comments if you'd like to share what you've learned. And if you're not already a subscriber, I'd love to have you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you next time.